Hello, I'm John Mark Stoudy, President and CEO of Riverside Resources. This is another episode of John Mark's Geo Tutorial. Today I'm here with Mickey Fulp, the mercenary geologist. Mickey's here to help us go through the steps for making a geologic map, covering different steps of prospecting and coming up with a drill target. Mickey, thank you for joining me. Thanks for inviting me, John Mark. Looking forward to going through the steps today. Look at me too. Now we're going to go through the various steps in making a geologic map. But the first thing we need to do is get the tools. Mickey, what are the tools we need to make a geologic map? Well, there's several tools that we use, John Mark. And we start with uh, our map board. And as you see here, I have a simple masonite board of wh upon which I've mounted a topographic map. And over that topographic map, I have a mylar overlay. And mylar is a uh, thin plastic upon which we plot our geology with a set of pencils including uh, regular lead pencils and colored pencils. Uh, we locate ourselves with a GPS which gives us our exact position on the topo map uh, and we use the Brunt and Compass illustrated here which is a special geologist compass which allows us to measure both the attitude and the trend of the rocks, the trend and the attitude in which the rocks are sitting. Also of importance, we're working as you can see in the desert, is the water. And there's nothing uh, that is more important to a geologist working in the, in the desert, especially in the summertime, than to stay hydrated so he is at his peak efficiency in making the geological map. Well, let's go make a map, Mickey. Let's do that, John Mark. Here we are at a geologic contact with Mickey. What do we do when we're doing a geologic map? When we get to the contact, how do you document it? Well, the first thing we have to do is figure out what kind of rock types we're dealing at. So we have right here two kinds of rocks, and let's take a look at those. We have this white rock here, and so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take out our hand lens, and we're going to identify this rock type and we see this is white bull quartz, one of our rock units. Then the other map uh, kind of rock we have is this kind of uh, light brownish tan rock, and we look at that and we say that's a quartz sericite schist. So now we know what kind of rocks we have here. And the next step is to determine where we are on the topo map. So we take out our GPS, we punch in uh, the uh, you take the coordinates, so with the GPS then, so if you take the coordinates, then you're going to put them on your map, aren't you? That's right. So uh, we now know where we are on the topo map. Take out our pencil, and we draw the contact on the geology map. Very important concept. Make the map in the field. Plot your data in the field. So if you're going to plot this data in the field, Let's go look at one of the D outcrops and see some of the observations that you'd make on the outcrop. Okay, let's do that, John Mark. Here we are, sitting on an outcrop with Mickey Fulp. He's going to go through how to take an attitude and how, what are some of the observations you're making on the outcrop. Once again, the first thing we need to determine, John Mark, is the rock type we're dealing with. Take my rock hammer, knock up a bit of rock, observe the minerals in the rock, identify the rock. Again, a quartz sericite schist, but this time with very strong iron oxides, which tends to indicate that there is mineralization in this rock. The next thing I need to do, John Mark, is I need to, to determine the trend and attitude of the rock. And I do that with my geologist compass, a Brunton compass. And the first thing I do is I take the strike of the rock. And I do that. You notice I have my field book laying here to get a, a very flat surface, and I measure the trend. And the trend is basically east-west here, an east-west strike in geological parlance. And then I need to take the attitude of the rock, and that's the way the rocks are, are dipping into the ground. So I hope that the uh, viewers can see that this rock dips very shallowly toward the north. And I take my Brunton compass and I lay it on the rock and I record this angle. And this is very important in uh, allowing us to determine the direction and the angle that we need to drill our holes on our target. 
So Mickey, you take that information, the latitude, the map, attitude, the strike and dip, you're going to put it on your map, you've drawn the geologic contacts, that's going to help you to tell some of the folds and faults to make a more complete geologic map. That's correct, John Mark. Great. Here I am with Mickey Fulp, mercenary geologist, on an outcrop that has alteration. The red is hematite, the white is a quartz vein. We want to take a sample here to find out if it has gold. Mickey, how do we do that? Well, the first thing we want to do is we want to mark the location of our sample our, uh, that we're going to take on our GPS, and we're using our GPS and our, our geology map. So we do that. Then, because I'm a geologic mapper, I need to focus on geologic mapping. And so we, uh, we take a piece of orange flagging tape and we wrap it around a rock. We've already located it on our map on a separate overlay which contains all of our samples and we're going to bring our geotechnical crew into sample. We know that with all these iron oxides here we have a quartz vein next to us that's been prospected and that this possibly contains gold. So we, uh, we will develop our drill targets in addition to the mapping with the geochemical sampling. Well Mickey, now we've seen the different parts to make a geologic map and we bring those together to do the interpretation in a cross-section. What are the key components you think about in making a cross-section? Well, we've determined through our observational data, we've determined the boundaries between rock types. We've determined our favorable rock type for hosting gold mineralization. We've determined the attitude and trend of those rock types. Now we practice the art of geology, and that's interpreting the rock. We need to separate our observational data from our interpretation. And we do that by projecting a two-dimensional surface into third dimension with a cross-section, which tells us the, at, the angle that we need to drill, the direction we need to drill, and the depth we need to drill to reach our goal target. Well, here at Sugarloaf Peak, we've done the drilling, we've used the cross-sections, and now in this video we've gone through the various steps to make a geologic map, leading to drilling, and doing the interpretations.